the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And For us to celebrate the sacred mysteries worthily, we acknowledge our sins, be sorry for them, then we ask for the mercy of God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God the Almighty. Walk in my presence and be blameless. God also said to Abraham, On your part, you and your descendants after you must keep my covenant throughout the ages. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you that you must keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. God further said to Abram, As for your wife Sarai, do not call her Sarai. Her name shall be Sarah. I will bless her, and I will give you a son by her. Him also will I bless. He shall give rise to nations, and rulers of peoples shall issue from him. Abram prostrated himself and laughed as he said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Or can Sarah give birth at ninety? Then Abram said to God, Let but Ishmael live on by your favor. God replied, Nevertheless, your wife Sarah is to bear you a son and you shall call him Isaac. I will maintain my covenant with him as an everlasting pact to be his God and the God of his descendants after him. As for Ishmael, I am heeding you. I hereby bless him. I will make him fertile and will multiply him exceedingly. He shall become the father of 12 chieftains and I will make of him a great nation. But my covenant I will maintain with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you by this time next year. When he had finished speaking with him, God departed from Abram. The word of the Lord. See how the Lord blesses those who fear him. See how the Lord Blessed are you who fear the Lord, who walk in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities.
Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus came down from the mountain, great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I do will it be made clean. His leprosy was cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Central to our readings today from the first reading book of Genesis, from our responsible psalm from the book of Psalms, and from the gospel according to Matthew, central to it is faith. So faith is not just the ability to enumerate beliefs, but it is basically, first and foremost, and necessarily, a relationship. From that relationship, you can say something. Example, God is Almighty. How can you say that God is Almighty? Because of your relationship, you experience it first. Then you have said, God is Almighty. So whatever beliefs that we receive from our forefathers, from the early Christians and from the apostles, these are all based from their experiences. Let's go to it after two things, two points. First, the crowd followed Jesus. But when he healed the leper, he told the leper, don't tell anyone. This would be our second part to talk about. Our first part is this, that Jesus, he chose to heal the man, the leper. He chose it. See, I do will it. My dear friends, this is the will of God. God wanted to touch the most damaged parts of our life. There is no condition or precondition. God does not demand, be clean first before you come to me. Be good first before you come to me. Dapat buot ka, antis ka magpalapit sa akon. Dapat limpyo ka, antis ka magpalapit sa akon. That's not the way of God. No. God wanted to touch the most damaged parts of our life. He wants to see you as you are, not as you must be and could be and should be. That would follow later on. But first and foremost, Kung ano ka subong, palapit ka sa iya. Just be honest. Just come to Him if you need a healing. That's why nagpalapit ka gani, kay may damage ka. Jesus stretched out His hand to heal not a clean person, but a deceased person to clean. So Jesus wanted also to enter into you and me 
to enter fully in the darker, darker areas of our experiences. Gusto yun na magsulod. Because God embraces us with lights and shadows in life. Amo na ang Diyos. He will embrace the lights and shadows in you because through embracing, we feel secure and that's the start of the healing process. The light would become brighter and the shadows would cease little by little. It would turn from shadow to light. Allow God to embrace you as who you are. Come to Him as who you are. You come to Him not because you are good. You want to be good. You come to Him not because you are perfect. You want to be perfect. That's why you come to Him. So we have shadows. But don't worry. God approves, allows the integration of light and shadow in our life. He will be the one. Allow Him to change that shadow into light and to let that light shine brighter in you. That is the work of God to cleanse us. It is not our work. Our work is to preserve what God cleansed. If you have observed in other miracles of healing by Jesus, after, after He would clean the person or forgive the person, it's only then that He would say, Go and sin no more. Only after. That is our work to preserve what He cleansed. The cleansing is God's work. It is not our work. But to preserve what He cleaned, that is already our responsibility. Experience it first. Experience it. Then, you will develop and grow your faith in God. Ang pagtuo, hindi sila nga, ah, amusin sa katekesis. Tuod na, eksperyensya na sa mga tao sang una. Ang imo eksperyensya, ya ano? If you have experienced it. So the challenge, the second part is this. Now it's a time for you to have that faith grow. Faith is an experience with God. Abraham experienced the Almighty. How mighty is God? We always get God Almighty Father. Ginap ginahambal tana. Tutuod, yun ka ba loka kung ang ano ginahambal mo, Almighty? No. Abraham experience, God is Almighty. How come? How come? Number one, nothing is impossible with God. That's how mighty God is. Nothing is impossible with Him. Father, katayog na, ari ay experience siya ni. Mapabusong sang Diyos ang birhin. Sino makahimo sina? The Blessed Virgin Mary became pregnant. Who can do that? That's how mighty God is. A barren, a barren woman became pregnant. Elizabeth, bauas, busong. Now here, Sarah, old beyond the age of pregnancy. At this time, Sarah was almost 90. Abraham was almost 100 years old. Nagbusong. 
sino pa na makasarang sina. An experience that God is almighty. Nothing is impossible with God. But based on their experience, they can say now, God is almighty because we have experienced it. And that experience is their faith, their relationship with God. They can prove it now. A responsible psalm tells us the blessings that would come to a person who is faithful, full of faith. If Abraham was blessed with family, with fortune, and being a blessing to nations, the book of Psalms says, How blessed are those who are faithful to God. Fear of the Lord is an experience of faith. To fear God means to acknowledge properly that God is almighty and also acknowledging you, yourself, that you are mighty lessness. You are nothing and God is everything. That is fear of the Lord. And you come to Him because nothing is impossible with Him. That is experience and that is faith. So Jesus Christ now, before He healed the leper, He put Him aside, aside from the crowd, and He said, Tell no one. This is very important for us. Sometimes, we need to be alone. We need to be in isolation and to think of our thoughts. Think of your own experience and your faith journey. It is necessary for us to have time for contemplation and examination and evaluation of our faith journey. We are living in a world with overloaded information. In our own time, information creates a crowd. In the time of Jesus, talking gathers a crowd. Basta may istorya ka, damo yun ka palapit mamati. Labi na yung kutso-kutso, ah, damo pag yung tilipon mo. Ah? Damo ka tilipon, basta binutig na gani ka kutso-kutso. Ah, damo na yun, we call them crowd, maniningad. But nowadays, it's overloaded information. And you know, my dear friends, it's not only information that gathers a crowd, but it's self-information. It's a crowd, a crowd of words. Lamo nang overloaded kita. Gaalalawas, hindi mo na mahandol ang mga words sa imo ulo. Overloaded na. We need at times to stand aside from this crowd, crowd of words, crowd of information, and to contemplate, to spend time in silence, and to think of our thoughts. This is very important. This is part of our faith journey, growth in your relationship with God. So Jesus inviting us, we have to come to Jesus in silence also, just you and Him, and allow Jesus to heal you, especially in the crowd, the crowd of words. 
the crowd of misinformation that we are now living. We need to be healed from this and not only the words of Jesus remain, then we can be a blessing to others. Blessed are those who fear the Lord. You will be blessed by God with a peace of mind, a serenity of soul, and that blessing becomes a blessing to others too. You yourself would bring peace and serenity to a very confused and doubtful soul. Like the leper in the gospel who cried out for healing, we now approach our Heavenly Father with confidence that our prayers will be answered. Lord, restore us with your grace. That the church may never fail in its duty of welcoming the marginalized and those excluded from society. Let us pray to the Lord. That the Lord may guide those involved in medical research in finding remedies for incurable diseases. Let us pray to the Lord. That our community may reach out with love and care to people ignored by society. Let us pray to the Lord. That the sick, the deprived, and the lonely may find support from their Christian brethren. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who died in Christ may be received in the Lord's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. We also raise to God in silence prayers and petitions of people whom we promise to pray for. God our Father, your gifts of healing and peace encourage us in our prayers. Grant that we seek in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through our goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for the goodness we have received. The wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, till become our spiritual drink. Pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of consolation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, 
we make offering of a heart pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. And Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company of the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith And therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Patricia our Bishop, and all the clergy. Also remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles with Saint Sebastian, Saint Zelie and Louis Martin, Saint Therese of the Child Jesus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him, with Him, and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that should enter under heaven. Only say the word of this shall be good. body of Christ.
let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure place of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Oratio Imperata on the threat from COVID-19. God, our Father, we come to you in our need to ask your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cure for this disease and to stem its transmission. Protect the medical experts that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health soon. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. We implore you to stop the spread of this virus and to save us from our fears. May the outpouring of your blessings on the 75th year foundation anniversary of Carmel obtain for the human family the healing graces and strength of faith so needed and that a renewal of relationship with God through prayer change our hearts and lives for the better. Grant all these to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin, Amen. Amen. Our Lady, help of all Christians and health of the sick. Pray for us. Saint Joseph. Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel. Pray for us. Saint Sebastian. Pray for us. Saint Rock. Pray for us. Saint Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. Saint Pedro Calungso. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with you. God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go. Glorify the Lord by your life.